Before going to see this movie, I told my friend that this movie had a 7 p.m. call time and that it was around an hour and 43 minutes long. But my guess is that I would be out around 8.50 to 9 p.m., specifically 8.55 p.m. Why? Well, we subtract about 8 to 10 minutes depending on each movie, but this movie specifically 8 minutes of rolling credits bringing us to an hour and 35 minutes. Then we add about 20 to 23 minutes of lag time plus full previews to the original call time, which is 7 p.m. So the movie doesn't really start till around 7.20 ish. From there, you just add an hour and 35 minutes, bringing us to 8.55 p.m. What time did the movie end? 8.57 p.m. Not the first time that's ever happened to me. I'm telling you, I'm good. Yellow, my name is Ivan Montero. Thank you for joining me in my journey to watch every movie ever created. Not really, but we are gonna get close. Now, I will say that towards the beginning of the movie, I felt a little like Unikitty from the Lego movie. Business, business, business. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Is this working? Yes. Yay! But by the end of the movie, I would say I understood enough and even learned a little bit about the stock market. Not only that, but this movie actually incited me to go do my own research and studying on stocks, 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 business, and numbers, something of which I don't typically enjoy. I really hate math and numbers. In fact, I'm really bad with even looking at the quantity and guessing estimating, I'm not good at that. Once during a summer course in college, my mother asked how many kids are in her class and I, I just, you know, decided to mentally count and I said 12. Turns out there's 42. Yeah, but I can do geometry, word problem statistics, that's all fine. But if you give me any other type of math and any other type of numbers, I'm like, I have an art to business hybrid degree. Like I said, I don't know that much or anything really about finance and the stock market. So much so that I found myself relating to Larry Owen's character, Chris, who was skeptical about the GameStop stock. So much so that I found myself relating to Larry Owen's character, Chris, who was skeptical about the GameStop stock and never bought in. That's not a spoiler. There's many people who never bought in. I never did. That's why I related with, with Larry, and that's why he's in the movie. While most other Wall Street movies take place a considerable amount of time after the events of the movie actually transpired, the events of Dumb Money happened only two years ago during a time that feels so very far away due to the event that shan't be spoken that pandemic. The movie about being something so close to home and so personal to me and surely to many others makes Dumb Money, in my opinion, an instant classic. It feels insanely nostalgic with references to things like specific TikTok dances, pesky managers about the mask usage, the people-less streets, and what it was like to interact with a stranger. How would you even interact with another person anymore? This movie isn't about the pandemic, it's just there to help establish the setting in which all of this took place. It's a familiar Familiar settings, one that literally everybody in this day and age has has gone through. Watching the pandemic again through the eyes of others, with it not being the pandemic being the point, was quite interesting to me. The movie pretty much hit all of the nostalgia beats for me, and I pretty much understand the Mario movie now. However, seeing this movie with people who remember the news, who participated in the stock and lost, who love finance and numbers, really did elevate the movie experience for me, for dumb money. And I think that's something to take into account when watching movies outside of your normal realm of knowledge. I should have honestly watched the Mario Bros movie with someone who had grown up playing the games like I did with Sonic 2, and like I did with this movie with my finance friend. But oh well, either do your research or take someone who you can live emotionally vicariously through for one hour and 35 minutes. My whole theater loved the movie. It was decently full, a surprising amount for an early access movie with very little marketing, but the demographic was quite interesting. The demographic was my age range, 24 through 30, then a lot of older folk as well. It was very cool to see this dark difference in ages, but everyone basically understood the exact same thing. Dumb Money teaches you not only about a time and a place that happened once in our history, but about people who were and are just like you and me trying to survive through the next paycheck in life and wondering when the next thing is going to hit. Morbid, sure, but realistic. It's how you stay ahead, which is one of the messages of the movie. Studying the patterns of what is being thrown at you and learning to navigate it. Use it to your advantage. That's True Capitalism, a movie about true capitalism against corporate greed. Chef's Kiss. The star-studded cast all gave amazing encore level performances and intermixed with a solid score and surprisingly stunning cinematography. And don't play me, 
I am a sucker for good cinematography. Gran Turismo, you can read my letterbox review down in the link below, had great cinematography. It just got a little repetitive and the script also needed some work, but it's a solid movie with really good cinematography. Man of Steel also was a super pretty movie to look at. The Super Mario Bros movie was also a pretty movie to look at. The point is, I will enjoy something to a degree if it's visually pretty, despite the story, unless the story is uh, the Super Mario Bros movie. But I didn't expect dumb money to have this level of cinematography that it had. Like I said, Dumb Money has a lot of big name stars. Each new character that appeared on screen was some big modern big name that you've definitely seen in something else as of late. Even Vincent D'Onofrio is in this movie. At one point you do begin to wonder who isn't in this movie. Samuel L. Jackson. That's who. We finally found one movie that the man isn't in because he's in everything. Seriously, I can see why America Ferreira is said to be up for a nomination for Dumb Money, not the Barbie movie, because this is some of the best acting I've seen from her in a long while. This performance felt real. And go her for being in two solid movies this year, this one and Barbie. Honestly, she's a standout in this. Another standout is Sebastian Stan, who is completely unrecognizable as Gabe Plotkin. I knew he was a good actor, but I didn't know he was this good. And of course, Paul Dano did amazing, as well as Shane Lee Woodley as his wife in the movie, Anthony Ramos, Seth Rogen, Talia Ryder, pretty much any main character in this movie, phenomenal. Anyone, everyone else did too. The supporting roles also did really, really well. Oh, and what about the writing and the pacing? Well, have you heard me complain about the script so far? No? Well, uh, there you go. In all seriousness though, the script is very good. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty much on the edge of my seat throughout the whole movie, because I never really knew how this whole thing ended. So I was pretty much captivated, and the pacing was rhythmic. I'm not gonna say who, because that's definitely a spoiler, but by the time the movie ends, and they explain what happens to each character after the trial with subtitles, they also throw up everyone's net worth. And when they did that for one character, my heart, my soul, completely shattered. I couldn't believe it. That's how serious knowing about corporations, knowing about stocks and marketing and finances actually is and how dangerous not knowing these things are because it is your livelihood that is on the line whether you put it out there yourself or not. If it exists, it's out there. Genuinely, Dumb Money is one of my favorite movies of this year. It gelled with one of my friends and it was just all right for the other. If you're into numbers, finances, and sticking it to the big guy, then you'll love this one. For for me, I think Dumb Money is more important than Oppenheimer. Personally, Oppenheimer was like, well, welcome to the frickin' club, Nolan. Whereas this one shows you that you're losing and teaches you how they're winning. Who's they? Well, you're just gonna have to watch the movie and find out for yourself. Dumb Money deserves and gets a 9.5 out of 10 for me. You can watch more reviews and reactions on my channel and my Patreon. All of those links are in the description below, so be sure to subscribe, like the video, and share with your friends. All my sushi media links are in the description below and I will see you next time. You've just been Montified.